Hey everybody, welcome to your new uh, MacBook Air training. Uh, I'm going to be looking just slightly under the lens there, so it's going to be a little weird. Um, we're really excited that you're getting this new MacBook Air. A couple of times during this video, I'm going to comment on what's different about the MacBook Air versus the MacBook Pro, which some of you content creators got. Uh, just to clarify, some of you opted to get the Dell Latitude, which is a 15-inch device, and there's another video for that. Um, and then some of you won the MacBook Pro with the content creator package. Uh, and this video is kind of for that one, but primarily for the MacBook Air package. Uh, hopefully you're getting what you feel uh, will make you most comfortable and will help you to function and innovate in your classroom. This has been a pretty massive endeavor, and as with any large initiative, there will be unforeseen problems. So bear with us. Please know we're trying to get you what you need, uh, and we have nothing but the highest expectations for ourselves uh, to make sure that you've got what you need and that you're feeling supported. Um, as always, if you need help troubleshooting uh, for your particular classroom needs, you can always work with your school tech, um, but I'm always available. Uh, just DM WIT at Madison City. Um, and also Natalia Dooley, uh, the elementary specialist, is always available to come help you troubleshoot. So there's no way we can cover everything, um, but we can definitely skim the surface. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink down and turn a little bit and we'll walk you through some of the details of your new device. So before we dig in too deeply, you should know that we added a number of additional Mac-related training videos to this YouTube playlist. So right after this film, you'll see a variety of other ones. Please explore them if you have any further questions. This playlist will grow over time, but for now, you can find multiple videos about the differences between Mac and PC, the basics of iMovie, etc. So now on to your machine. Your MacBook Air is a 13-inch model. It's got 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes solid-state drive. If you've never used a solid-state drive before, or SSD for short, you're in for a treat. There are no moving parts in them, and the technology is blazing fast. It's basically, your hard drive is basically RAM. Uh, a typical reboot will take a matter of seconds, and most applications open in two seconds or less, so that's going to be great. I've personally experienced an SSD in two of my home computers, and I can honestly say that it's probably the most important hardware advancement for consumers in well over a decade. If you got a MacBook Pro, your RAM has been upgraded to 8 gigs, and your primary drive has been upgraded to 256 gigs. You will need this extra power and space as you dive deeper into HD video editing, which is very power hungry. The operating system is called OS X Yosemite. That's the marketing name for version 10.10. .10. In the next couple of months, Apple will release OS X El Capitan, yet another California-based landmark, and we will send an email regarding that upgrade when it becomes relevant. Uh, let's go ahead and look at your inputs and outputs on the machine. You've got two USB 3.0 slots for various peripherals. These are blazing fast. They're better than the typical USB ports that you're accustomed to. If you got a MacBook Pro, then you also have an HDMI port for running digitally to a TV screen or a new projector. For those of you with the MacBook Airs, uh, which is most of you, you'll need one of two things to hook to a projector. Running into an older projector or monitor via VGA will require what's called a mini display port to VGA adapter, and it looks like this. They are about 29 bucks at the Apple Store, but you can also get them at Best Buy, and you might find it on Amazon a lot cheaper. If you're wanting to hook up to a clear touch, a TV, or a newer projector with HDMI, then you'll need mini display port to HDMI. It looks like this. It's the same price, and it's widely available. We couldn't effectively provide these to you because every school has different projection setups, and some of you may choose to never project from your device. One great common practice, uh, speaking of that, is I recommend creating Google Slides or placing slideshows or whatever you're doing in your classroom into your U drive and then using your classroom computer to pull them up. This saves you from unplugging and replugging all day, every day, and it's typically how I like to roll. But if I needed to project my new device, which many of you will choose to do, I'll need to unplug the VGA cable from my classroom computer and then attach the mini display port to VGA adapter to that VGA cable. Then I'll simply plug that into my Mac and now we're connected to the projector. If you're confused about what to do with this, get with the tech at your school or shoot me an email and we'll get it figured out quickly. 
Speaking of Mini DisplayPort, you should know that it plugs into what's called your Thunderbolt 2 port on your Mac. That's an Apple proprietary connection. The Thunderbolt 2 port has a variety of other uses too, however, not just to plug into an external display. You can use it to plug into a USB hub, a docking station, additional external displays, hard drives, audio interfaces, and many other items. Uh, I'm sure plenty of nerds will figure out a great way to use this. If you got a MacBook Pro, you're going to have two of those Thunderbolt ports for additional connectivity. Keep in mind, you can also daisy chain Thunderbolt devices together for more than two simultaneous peripherals. So you could plug in five hard drives in one chain. Probably more than you need to know for this basics video, but now you know. You also have an SD card slot. This slot is for a standard SD card that's traditionally used in digital cameras and camcorders. This will be especially helpful for digital media teachers, Jets Press, and elementary exploratory teachers focused on photography or video production. The power adapter connects to the laptop via the MagSafe 2 connector. This connector is magnetically attracted to the laptop's MagSafe port which prevents destroying the laptop if you trip over the cable, which has happened. The cable will simply come unplugged and you pick it up and plug it back in. Quick word of warning for all new Mac recipients. In the never ending pursuit of thinner, Apple has removed the ethernet ports from the laptops. They've also removed optical drives like CD-ROM drives and DVD drives. The tech responsible for doing your setup with you at pickup will be equipped with what's called a Thunderbolt to ethernet adapter. And if any of you have any reason to use an Ethernet port in the future, which should be pretty rare for teachers, uh, you'll need to pick up a Thunderbolt to Ethernet adapter, and those are also 29 bucks at the Apple Store. Your MacBook will come equipped with the latest Microsoft Office for Mac, which is 2011. You'll have the same suite of programs that you're accustomed to on your classroom PC. You'll also have Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. These are Apple's versions of the famous Microsoft Office programs. These are great products and many of you will like to use them, but you may choose to stick with Microsoft products on the Mac because they're more compatible with your peers' PCs, so something to consider. Every new Mac comes with GarageBand, Apple's audio editing software, which is great for making music, recording narration, etc. It also comes with iMovie, a surprisingly powerful video editing program. If you want to jump into editing without any additional expenses, you can always video with your iPhone or iPad and then tether it to your Mac to edit that video in iMovie. It's great. If you are a recipient of the MacBook Pro with the Content Creator Package, you'll also have Final Cut Pro 10. It's one of the world's most popular professional video editing programs. We're going to dig into that separately in face-to-face -face training, but please know we've added another playlist in SteelMine uh, for that too. All machines will have VMware Horizon View pre-installed, so you can always access virtual by finding the app and logging in. More on that in a minute. To map to a network drive or a shared folder on a Mac, you'll need to go to Finder. That's Apple's version of essentially my computer. Once you're in Finder, and it says Finder in bold in the top left, you'll choose the Go menu, and then you'll select Connect to Server. You can also just hit Command K in the Finder and you'll access it too. Here you will type SMB colon forward slash forward slash. That's different on a Mac than it is on a PC. <clears throat> and then you'll type your path just like you always have. In my case, if I were a James Clemens teacher, I would type SMB colon forward slash forward slash TRC dash FS dash FAC slash jchs slash dmwit. I'm not a James Clemens teacher, so in my case I'll type smb colon forward slash forward slash trc dot fs dot co slash staff slash dmwit. Then I would choose connect. Then make sure you click the plus sign to add it as one of your favorite servers. You shouldn't have to do it again. You can map multiple servers most of you will be the slash slash trc dash fs dash fac slash your school name slash your username and that's on the screen for you now. Printing on a Mac is going to be strange at first, uh, especially for some of you. If you are in a school where you use secure printing, James Clemens is this way for one and some of the others, 
then you'll need to print via the virtual environment for now. Uh, if you create a file on your Mac and need to print it, you can simply drop the file into your U drive or into Google Drive, then log into virtual and print like you always have. However, for those of you in schools that do not use secure printing, these are schools where you don't have to type in your employee number to print something. Uh, in those cases, all you need to do is select File and Print from any application, and most of our district's printers will show up. Technology is still in the process of getting them all to populate in that list. You can also go to Apple at the top left, System Preferences, and then choose Scanners and Printers, and then you could right-click any printer you want and select that as your default. Now, when you print from any application, it will automatically print to that printer. I highly recommend doing that uh, if you need uh, the same printer frequently. As for getting new apps on your Mac, technology is still working with AirWatch to get this functional. Soon, there will be an app catalog akin to that that's now on your students' iPads in which you can just retrieve software and install it without an administrator's password. That's coming soon. For now, if you need software, you'll need to put in a ticket with the software request, and someone in technology will manually push that application to your machine. Okay, there's absolutely no way I covered everything, guys, but this should boost your confidence with your new Mac substantially. I wouldn't be surprised if I do a part two in the near future uh, after the unforeseen questions begin to roll in. As always, please be patient with us as we work out the kinks. These devices, they're intended in the long run to make your life as an educator better. Have fun with them. Experiment. Find out what works best for you. Email me at dmwit at madisoncity.k12.al.us if you need something related to usability. And submit a ticket if you've got a malfunction, problems logging in, or if you need additional software. I hope you guys have a great Labor Day.